Okay, okay, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine! Oh my god, I am gonna hit you so hard in the Yarnum, your ancestors' heads will spin. Ooh. Oh, hi there, I didn't see you come in. I've just been uh, playing Bloodborne, you know, that game that I've played about, I don't know, 20 times already? And I'm still getting my ass kicked. Anyway, that's not important. What's important right now is that recently Digital Foundry just showcased a Bloodborne mod that upscales the game into 4K with AI and 60 FPS. Let's pretend that I know what all that means for a second. The mod, originally coded by Lance McDonald for the PS4 Pro, couldn't even really use the full potential of that console, but someone now has it allegedly running on a PS5. And even that is not perfect. It impacts the visual quality and just those extra little details in a variety of different ways. However, it is still a pretty impressive upscaling of a pretty impressive game. So even though that mod is technically working and even though it technically looks great, I, I think the real question here is, why hasn't Sony done this themselves? Like when there are people like me, okay, still playing the original Bloodborne, who would be more than happy to pay a little bit extra for that graphical upscaling, that performance upgrade, that just a little bit of extra smoothness. Like I would buy that immediately. That's money on the table. Why isn't Sony going for it? But well, it just ain't quite as simple as that. And it's probably some boring corporate or technical reason that it hasn't happened. I mean, it's going to be something like the code is too old. There's licensing issues. A dog ate the hard drive that it was originally stored on. Or Sony are already making it and they're going to surprise us one day with a full release and it's all going to be sunshine and roses. Hey, it's unlikely but it's not impossible. But whatever the reason, honestly, the biggest surprise for me in reading up on this entire story is that Bloodborne is six years old. Six years old? I mean, I remember going and playing a demo of Bloodborne at EGX with Johnny Chiodini. And I remember it being a wonderful time. We laughed a lot. We got frustrated a lot. And it's just good times. And yeah, blah, 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 the linear nature of time. And we're all getting older. And oh my God, like, will it ever stop? Like, yeah, yeah, that, you know, that time is terrifying. But also, like, I can't believe it's been six years. Six years since this game was launched. And, you know, like, it's been tw since 2015 that we've had new Bloodborne. We've had lots of iterations of Dark Souls over the years and one Bloodborne and one little measly DLC. I don't think it's right. So here's my question. Is it going to be... Sorry, let's just get let's just get this in shot because it's this kind of day. It's this kind of question. It's this kind of show. Is it going to be that uh, from are going to give over the production of a Demon Souls esque remake to an amazing uh, development company like Bluepoint, or are we going to have a Bloodborne Two? A Bloodborne Two would be amazing. Imagine all the twisted new ideas that you could have with that. Imagine all the new monsters. Imagine all the new things that From Software has learned in the years since we've had Bloodborne, because. I don't know about you guys, but like I've been playing Bloodborne, you know, right up until just then. And yes, at the time, the combat was super fast, super slick, super exciting. But we've come a long way since then. Just think about Sekiro, all right? Go from playing Bloodborne to playing Sekiro, and right there you can feel the difference. So, I don't know. What would you rather see? Would you rather see a remaster of a really great game? Would you rather see a remake? have a really good game. Or would you like to see a sequel? I think I'm going towards the latter. I think we've built something great. Let's see something new. I mean, there's so much more you can do with that world. Yeah, interesting. Lady Dimitrescu is big in a lot of ways. Big hat, big height, big energy, big just like everything. And now, Big Standee. A cutout of Resident Evil Village's main antagonist has been spotted in Hong Kong. And I have one question. When the hell are we getting one over here? And why, when Capcom has shown it's okay taking risks with Resident Evil, 
Hasn't it taken more risks with Lady Dimitrescu? All these people wanting to get photos next to this cutout of Lady D just shows how much love there still is for her on the internet and in the real world. But this is the first time that Lady Dimitrescu's popularity has been supported by physical assets from Capcom. It's been ages since we've had this kind of outpouring of adoration and support and admiration and a little bit of thirst for a video game character, with the last time this happened being Bowsette. To me, even though this standee is a great start, it still feels like Capcom is still kind of struggling to catch up with the tidal wave of adoration people have for Lady Dimitrescu. And yep, this is my excuse to talk even more about Bowsette. Bowsette and Lady Dimitrescu might look incredibly different, but they have one very obvious key thing in common. They're both female villains and they're not ashamed of it. We love these characters because they're so proud of who they are. They're proud of being evil, which is just amazing to see. And I also think that we don't have enough female villains like that around, definitely not in video games. So when one pops up like Lady Dimitrescu did, the internet goes fucking mad for them. So yeah, both Bowsette and Lady Dimitrescu got staggered Staggeringly positive receptions when they launched on the internet. The only difference being that Bowsette, as it's a fan creation, can't be capitalised on by Nintendo. Not without some legal stuff, I assume. So that begs the question, why hasn't there been more merch, more posts around Lady Dimitrescu yet? To be honest, I'm not even surprised that it's Resident Evil that's filling this giant female villain void, quite literally, because it's shown that it's not afraid to take risks when it comes to Resident Evil, whether that's the games, the characters, or what people expect from them as a whole. Because when you think about it, Resident Evil for the longest time has been an action horror franchise. I know it didn't start that way, but it had been like that way for quite a while until Resident Evil 7 came out. And I mean, what a difference Resident Evil 7 Biohazard was. It was first person, intense, set in one location in the south of America with like a rural family, and it didn't have any of the main characters in it. Chris Redfield only turns up at the very end. And then take a look at Resident Evil Village. I mean, it takes place in a Scandinavian Gothic village that looks like it's come straight out of the 1910s. There's absolutely nothing to link it to modern tech or anything that we would have expected from Resident Evil. The one thing that links them together is Ethan and Mia, rest in peace, and Chris Redfield once again. Resident Evil Village is so different from Resident Evil 7 that it's obvious that Capcom isn't afraid to take risks when it comes to its beloved franchise. So why not go the whole hog and include Demetrescu as a statue in one of the collector's editions? It just doesn't make sense to me. Okay, to be fair, one might be coming out in the future and I will rejoice if that happens, but Resident Evil's 25th anniversary happened fairly recently and everyone here at Team EG, especially Aoife, were just waiting for a demo to come out or a new collector's edition or some kind of merch associated with Lady Dimitrescu because you know it would sell well. But there was nothing apart from a tease that something is coming in April. I don't know, it just feels really weird that there's nothing more surrounding Dimitrescu coming officially from Capcom itself because you'd think they would want to capitalise on the massive popularity she enjoyed when she was first introduced. Plus, considering Lady Dimitrescu might be starting a female villain trend of her own and female villains that are middle-aged, which is just an entirely different thing that I'm so thrilled about, it feels natural that Capcom would want to kind of back her up with more stuff. But I guess we'll just have to wait and see what that will be and if there will be anything. I really hope this story doesn't end with that cardboard standee being the only thing we get from Lady Dimitrescu in 2021 because that would be really sad that after Lady Dimitrescu was introduced and she got such a positive reception and everyone seemed to respond to her so well, she's just kind of left and done nothing with. Basically, join me and Aoife and Ian in having your fingers crossed for more Dimitrescu stuff coming soon, because if she's capitalised on properly, she could have a massive difference on the gaming landscape as a whole, as a middle-aged female villain and as something that shows that it doesn't hurt to take some risks every now and again, even when it comes to major gaming franchises. Hey there, I'm Ian Higton, and this is my garden. Hello. And um, I'm here to bury my PlayStation Vita because it's dead now. Ow. What the? Okay, so the PlayStation Vita isn't really dead, but this week Sony confirmed that it will be closing the online stores for the PSP, the PS Vita, and the PS3 
for good. That means permanently. Now, this might not be straight up killing those consoles, but it will kill your ability to be able to purchase a load of old games and DLCs for those platforms. From the 2nd of July, the PS3 and PSP digital stores will be shutting their digital doors for good, while the PS Vita store will be popping its digital clogs on August the 27th. It's worth noting that you'll still be able to re-download anything you've already purchased in the past on those platforms, but if there's been a game you've been holding out from buying for a while now, you better get to it because soon you're not going to be able to. So here's a little tribute to a small selection of digital titles that will soon be disappearing for good. <laughs> so sad. Now, obviously, physical copies of PSP, PS Vita, and PS3 titles aren't just going to disappear off the face of the earth, so there'll still be plenty of chances for you to buy them. But, and this is a big but, it's pretty safe to assume that prices for those are going to absolutely skyrocket on places like eBay as they become more and more scarce. I mean, physical editions of things like Persona 3 FES for PlayStation 2 or even Silent Hill 1 for the PlayStation 1 already command massive prices on eBay. So scalpers are going to be laughing all the way to the bank as soon as games which were previously available on digital stores for a reasonable price suddenly vanish into the digital ether. But to be honest with you, I've not really touched my PlayStation Vita at all since I picked up a Nintendo Switch a couple of years ago. Surely I'm not the only one thinking that Sony should be doing at least something to preserve its gaming history. So unless you've got a ton of disposable cash lying around and enough room to house five generations of Sony consoles, not counting the handhelds, a couple of generations worth of digital video games are just about to be lost in time like tears in rain. Without a way to play or access older titles on PlayStation 5, aside from a PS Now membership, and well, they only offer a small selection of retro games, it'll probably be left to the modding and hacking communities to stop this little slice of digital history from disappearing for good. Play has no limits, eh, PlayStation? I guess that's only true if the play they're talking about here is less than eight years old, because the ability to digitally purchase PlayStation games from anything older than the PlayStation 4 is about to become very limited indeed. <sighs> right, well, that's the PlayStation Vita buried, but I think I'm gonna need more than this weeding fork here if I'm gonna bury this OG PlayStation 3 as well, because it's Bloody massive! Oh god, I, I think I'm gonna need to rent a JCB to get this thing in the earth.